This video is to help you put your vacuum chamber together. It's actually pretty easy to assemble, but if you do some specific things wrong, then it might not work correctly. So I wanted to do my own video putting my own vacuum chamber together so you can see exactly how to do it and help you troubleshoot any problems you might come up with. So here are all the pieces that come in your vacuum chamber kit. You might have received two of these O-rings. If you did, just know that you only need one of them. Now the first step in here is to seal your vacuum gauge. So in order to do this, you need your Teflon tape and you need your hose adapter and you need your vacuum gauge. So this tape is very fragile, it's made of Teflon and it's meant to seal vacuum or gas lines. So what you do is you take your vacuum gauge and you need to wrap your Teflon tape around the threads here. And it's important that you wrap it this way. So wrap it in this direction and just wrap it so that it's flat against the threads. And we wrapped it this way so that we, when we thread this on, it doesn't unthread it when we turn it. So we turn it this way and just tighten it as much as you can get with your hand. And then you can use the included wrench here and tighten it the rest of the way. So now this should be able to hold a vacuum. Then when, once you have your vacuum gauge assembled, then you can assemble your tube line. So the first step is to take your hose adapter and put an O-ring on it. So you just put the O-ring on the threaded end here, and then you put it through the hole here. So now the O-ring should be between the hose adapter and the lid. And the O-ring is what actually creates the vacuum seal. And to make sure the O-ring stays tight against there, you take this plastic nut that's included, and you just tighten it on the bottom. And you just need to get it finger tight on the bottom. If you do it too much, the O-ring will squish out from the sides and it'll create a gap and it won't create a vacuum seal. So you may have gotten a wrench in your kit, but if you did, don't over tighten it because it will actually make the vacuum seal worse. It actually works best to just do it finger tight. So as soon as you see that O-ring to begin to slightly compress on the bottom, that means you've gotten it right. And now you can assemble your whole hose assembly. So you take the long hose, and put it on here. And then you take your three-way splitter here, plug it in here. Take another short hose, put it here. Another one on top here. You can plug in your vacuum gauge now. And then comes your one-way valve. So on these, there's a little arrow that's kind of hard to see. It's engraven in here, but this shows the direction of flow. So you can find the arrow on there, and if you can't find the arrow, then just suck or blow through it, and you can see which direction the air is going. You want the air to go away from your vacuum chamber, so you want the arrow pointing this way. So you plug it in here, then plug another one in, another three-way splitter, then you plug in your syringe, Remember to take the cap off of it and plug it in. Then your last hose. And then your last one-way valve, the arrow should be pointing that way again. So now that it's fully assembled, you can put the lid on your vacuum chamber. And as you screw it, it's best to, to hold the lid in place and then turn the jar beneath it. That way you don't turn this and loosen your nut and break the vacuum seal right there. Okay, then once your vacuum chamber is fully assembled, you can vacuum it out. So put one of your experiments in here, whether it be the marshmallow, the balloon, or the shaving foam, and then you can vacuum it out. And you'll see that it should easily start to go down. The pin should start to go down with each pump. And as you pump more and more, it will get harder and harder to pump and this won't move as much. That's because you're moving less and less air out because you're getting a better and better vacuum in the chamber. But after a few pumps, you should be able to get down to the maximum vacuum you can get with this setup. And you'll be able to tell when you're at maximum vacuum because additional pumps won't make the pin go lower. And then once you need to let the air back in, you can choose any one of these places 
but you just pull off the tube and let the air back in and the pin should go back to atmospheric pressure. And if during this whole setup your vacuum gauge isn't working correctly or you can't seem to get a good seal here, you can always just take off this whole... You can always just remove this whole connection here and just plug this on and still pull a vacuum in there just as strong as when you had this on. You just won't be able to tell what pressure it's at. So if for any reason you just can't get this to work, you can pull it off and still have a working vacuum chamber like this. And if there does seem to be some type of defect with your gauge, let us know at our customer service line. I hope this video helped you be able to put this together a little bit easier. Like I said, it's a pretty easy assembly. The main things are, the main thing is getting this connection a good seal and this connection a good seal. Once you can get this O-ring sealed and this sealed, then your vacuum chamber should work just fine.